Hello everybody, welcome to the very first video of 2024. Um, obviously the time I'm recording this, not even 2024, maybe a, a little bit, a little bit closer there, like three days away. But, who cares, I know that it's gonna be 2024 by then. Um, but, hold on. Sorry. Oh, um, today, a 14 year, a 14 year old tries to fake insanity. They found this girl, right? And this... 14 year old is probably stupid. I just have a feeling. You know, they found this girl, right? Where? In our neighborhood. Down our this is a deep ass voice for a 14 year old. Hey, she sounds like my one friend. That creeps me out. No, she's dead. That's why this is very important. It's all on you right now. my problem. You were know, the last one last seen with her. So right now, it's a lot of. It's facing you right now, son. This is Aiden Fucci, a 14-year-old boy from Florida, being questioned by his parents at a police station. Can I just say something? He's a Florida man, so it's, it's, it runs in, the, runs in the state culture. In 2021, Aiden is being held and questioned under suspicion of murdering his 13-year-old I was going to say he's ugly, Tristan but... Bailey. But, um... So, I was going to say that he's ugly, but, um... The problem with that is, um... I'm ugly, so I can't really judge anybody else who's ugly. Something he insists he had no part in. But to understand how police came to suspect Aiden was capable of murder, we must go back to the beginning. What was this? In the quiet town of St. John's, Florida, Tristan Bailey was just a 13-year-old girl attending Patriot Oaks Academy, dealing with all the usual challenges high school brings. Dang it. Oh. She was a dedicated... Whoa, 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 whoa. 13 year old at a high school. That. Is that normal for Florida or what? Because you were not in high school at 13, that is for sure. Full of enthusiasm, ambition, and Unless you skip a grade, maybe? Among other kids her age. Her classmate Aiden, however, was a different story. According to those who knew him, Aiden Fuji was an oddball. While his teachers noted that Aiden showed them respect and never outwardly caused trouble, his hatred of authority, arrogance, and know-it-all approach to life was off-putting for his <coughs> teachers and classmates. Throughout his school life, Aiden would land himself regular suspensions, usually after getting into fights with his classmates. Well, at first, I didn't know it was him or his friend that was in ISS, and that's why they were in ISS. Because one was saying the other one was bad. So the allegation was that Aiden threatened to throw another student out of the window. That's correct. God. That's correct. Damn. But outside of school, Aiden was displaying. I mean, listen, in our school, it's like. Here's. Let me, let me do a reenactment. Actually, no. I'm just going to say it. Um, somebody says that they want to kill somebody. Either A. They get reported, and they go to ISS or B. They don't report them, and just nobody finds out. <laughs> because in our school, it's like somebody who wants to kill somebody is a joke. Unless this guy, Aiden, actually wanted to throw this kid out of the window. Red flags. Aiden had an unnatural obsession with murder, frequently discussing the topic with his friends. Yeah, I have an obsession over murder. It's cool, but I don't really talk about it. I mean, it's 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 cool. Like I'm a horror person. It's cool in that sense, but if it's like real life, it's kind of a little bit iffy on that. According to those who knew him, Aiden often talked about his deep desire to feel what it would be like to kill another human being. He had said, he, like he said, like he, like his knife. He wanted the like slit somebody's throat and like he said it'd be satisfying that's like psychopath like behavior people he talked about fighting people i've seen him practice static motion what the oh god what is this oh god not wind zip i'm not giving you back my trial don't need you aiden would often talk about how he would murder his hypothetical victims he suggested that he would take the wooded it's area at night, stab them, leave, Shit. and later claimed he had nothing to do with the murders. 
when he talked about killing someone, he even told Zoffy Bookbowman how he would do it. And what he told her was, I would walk around at night, and I would find somebody else walking at night. I would drag them in the woods, and I would stab them, and then I would pretend like I didn't do it. That's a shitty, that's a shitty, really shitty way to kill somebody. <laughs> so that I can keep killing people. That also, that's probably where he messed up. In her sworn testimony, Aiden's girlfriend confirmed that he had an unnatural obsession with the idea of killing, and often claimed to hear voices in his head encouraging him to murder someone. When he wasn't at school, Aiden would always carry a knife. One of two named Picker and Poker. On several occasions. I mean, I carry my knife. Obviously, not at school. Not at school. I mean, I carry my knife, but that's for protection. Like, if somebody has a gun and they're aiming at me, sure, I might pull out my knife. No, just give me a little bit of confidence to not die. Or give me a little upper. I don't know. But obviously, if. Is a random stranger on this not gonna pull out my knife and go stab him? Like that's no. I mean, I won't carry it sometimes. I mean, I'll carry it like if I'm going somewhere dangerous, maybe. I don't know. She said Aiden would pretend to. But I barely go anywhere, so it's not like anything's gonna happen. Or sneak up behind her and hold one of these knives to her throat. Despite the blatant red flags on display, his girlfriend believed it was nothing more than teenage morbid curiosity. She never thought he would go through with it. That's going to be Timothy coming up with skateboard. Working out. Yeah, that's going to be Timothy coming up with skateboard. Working out. Yeah, On May 8th, 2021, the oh, shit, this one Aiden spent the day with his girlfriend and their friend Trey. The three spent the day skateboarding around the neighborhood, as they often did. Across town, Tristan was enjoying dinner with her family. When she returned home around midnight, Tristan's older sister saw her on a video chat with a boy in a baseball cap, who convinced her to come and hang out at Trey's house. Did this say this is real footage? After an hour together, Aiden and Tristan left Trey's house. Between 1.24 and 1.45 a.m. Shit, they were up late. Surveillance Actually, that's not really late. I should... A cul -de -sac at the end of the Just saying that it's early. It was the last time Tristan would be seen alive. Aiden took Tristan to a wooded area and stabbed her 114 times. Okay, what a, what a way to start off the new year. Killing her um, before she could fight for her life. Fuck. The murder happened precisely as he previously suggested. He took someone into the woods and stabbed them. In his mind, he had committed the perfect crime. No, we hadn't. Only he didn't. You can see that he was carrying something. This, listen, we, there's cameras everywhere now. You're on tape all the time. I'm on tape right now. Wanna know how I know? There's a camera in my hallway. It can probably hear me, but whatever. No, I'm just kidding. At 3.27 a.m., Aiden ran back home barefoot, holding his shoes. When he eventually got home, Aiden got to work, hiding the evidence in his room, convinced that he had gotten away with murder. What an idiot. The following morning, Mother's Day 2021, Tristan's family made the horrifying discovery that their daughter and sister were missing. After exhausting all options, they contacted the authorities, who put out a missing persons report and began interviewing those who knew her. That list included the last person to see her alive, Aiden. Aiden's testimony to the authorities did not inspire confidence. His timeline didn't add up seemingly taking two hours to return home in what was, at most, a 30-minute walk. He suggested that Tristan had been hanging around with a 20-something drug dealer, a claim that nobody else backed up. And then, 
Authorities received an email with an attachment. It was a Snapchat screenshot. In the back of the patrol car, Aiden took a selfie with a peace sign, adding a text banner that read, Hey guys, has anybody seen Tristan lately? His classmates shot back, reminding him that Aiden was the only one who knew what happened. But his sociopathic glee didn't end with just one post, as he openly implied that his victim was alive and staging this whole saga. Dude, I feel bad for the girl, to be honest. I really do. That like, shit sucks. Yeah, well, having fun in a f***ing cop car. Yep. Tristan. What's up, guys? Yep. Tristan, if you f***ing walk out the damn... When you see this in a month... Before police could obtain Aiden's cell phone, a runner discovered the bloodied corpse of Tristan in the woods, the stab wounds visible. Within an hour, police put out a search warrant for Aiden and brought him in for questioning, leaving him in a room with his parents. Where did, you, where did you even stab her? That's what I want to know. Because it was like, what, 114? What, did you stab her in like every single direction? Because that's very messed up. At this point, it's obvious just how much trouble Aiden is in. But his cold refusal to even acknowledge it is chilling. When reminded that his friend is dead, Aiden fails to see why he should care. Yeah, they found this girl, right? Where? In our neighborhood. Down our main street. Is she good? No, no she's, she's dead. Okay, number one. If I was this guy, obviously, actually, no. No. If I wasn't this guy, because he's already fucked up. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, he should honestly, if he wants to at least get away from being a suspect all he has to do is pretend to be sad which he's already feeling that and two actually now that i think about it why would he pretend to be sad because he's already fucked up by that i mean you know he's already caught it's all on you right now my problem so right now, it's a lot of it's facing you right now, son. At one point during the encounter, Aiden's parents press him to acknowledge. Dude, he is breathing heavily. Like where did his chest is going? <laughs> like <laughs> just how serious the situation is, but he can't seem to see. Yeah, see, look, it's like a big ass breath. Aiden claims he isn't, despite his fidgety hand movements. <laughs> Fuck that shit. You know your pussy ass. I'm joking. You know you're scared, man. Come on. I mean, listen, if I were you, actually, no, if I wasn't, I'm joking. If I were you, I'd be scared as f I'd be shitting. All right. And I, he knows damn well he's fucking scared. Yeah, yeah a little. We, we, you're, you're, you're literally breathing super heavy right now. You know what they should do? They should te take test his heart rate. If his heart rate is racing super fast, it's him. Aiden's parents continue pressing him for his side of the story, but he remains totally unmoved, offering up vague answers through a disinterested mumble and frequently avoiding eye contact. Aiden admits that he kissed Tristan and did more with her, confirming his DNA is on her. And yet, through it all, he shows seemingly no recognition of how damning that evidence could be. I wanna know where he hid the evidence in his room. It'd be funny as <laughs> if it was just in a fucking drawer. Point, I would just admit it. I mean, they're already done. Like, I'll just say it. Later on, Aiden is again asked if there's anything that's still being hidden 
from his parents. While he insists there isn't, he takes the opportunity to try and frame Tristan as the aggressor, implying that she got aggressive with Aiden and prompting him to push her. Knowing the truth, that claim is nothing but sociopathic, and his clear lack of emotion or even apprehension is chilling to see. Why is the audio so damn low? <laughs> When his parents finally pressed him for his side of the story, Aiden gave them a slight variant of what he told the police, claiming that Tristan had no intentions of going home that night. According to him, she was looking for someone to go home with, and decided to get a ride with her dealer. But his body language is far from convincing, again offering the information through a bored, disinterested mumble. Is that the ring down? Idiot. <laughs> but that had to go for a second. encouraged their son to say nothing until his attorney arrived, police raided their home. When they entered Aiden's room, they discovered a treasure trove of smoking gun evidence. They found an empty knife sheath in his drawer, alleged- <laughs> I don't know why it took me so long. <laughs> oh, this guy, this kid. Oh, you idiot. Stuffed next to his dresser, they found a pair of wet night. Next? That's out in the o This kid needs to learn hiding spot. Shoes with blood on them, matching the outfit Aiden wore in the surveillance footage. And stuffed under the dresser, authorities found a blooded t shirt and a pair of wet blue denim jeans, which matched the outfit Aiden wore that day. But as if that wasn't enough, Authorities also found that the drain in the bathroom sink had traces of blood and dirt. And among his belongings, an odd notebook contained drawings of a violent and satanic nature. Yeah. There was no question. Authorities quickly arrested Aiden on a charge of second degree murder, upping it to first degree after the extent of Tristan's wounds became clear. Then, out of the blue, Aiden's mother, Crystal, was arrested on a warrant. Huh? Smith is seen cleaning her son's bloody jeans. When officers went into the home, they found a pair of wet jeans in Fucci's bedroom. Holy fuck, that took a turn. Shit, I was not ready for that. And as we reported earlier this summer, the jeans and a drain in a bathroom tested positive for blood. Fuck. That was like... Holy shit, that's like a big ass twist. Thanks to a surveillance video within the home, Crystal had been caught on tape washing Aiden's bloodied blue jeans in the sink. Authorities quickly charged her with tampering with crucial case evidence and advising her son to lie about what he wore the night of the murder. She has pleaded not guilty to both of these allegations. So this woman right here in the back was lying on it. In September 2021, Aiden was brought into a room at the Duval County Jail to follow the process of his pre-trial hearing. Why is he tweeting? Everyone viewed his behavior as erratic, if not highly concerning. And why am I here? I just want to talk to my mom and dad. What's going on? What's going on? From the moment he enters the room, 
Aiden seems dazed and confused. But it all gets a little more unusual when he begins mumbling about demons taking his soul. Oh, I swear to God, this is not demons. Shit. It's not fucking demons. Get the fuck out of here, it's yourself. Since investigators found a notebook full of satanic drawings, it's not impossible that Aiden truly believed demons were attacking him. But I mean, is likely demons could exist. But. Never mind, I'm not, I'm not agreeing to the controversy of that. Aiden's last ditch effort to secure a way out of prison. The insanity plea has long been a go to solution for killers and psychopaths. And faking a demonic possession works, except when it doesn't. Aiden would eventually go to trial for his crimes, and the judge declaring that his alleged demonic possession would not be considered. Unsurprisingly, that seemed to help Aiden overcome the demonic attacks he was allegedly suffering beforehand. The old, emotionless personality his classmates warned on returned, with Aiden barely reacting to the gruesome details of his crimes. Throughout the trial, Aiden was seen to be following the orders given to him by his attorney, barely saying a word except when he specifically had to. But that doesn't mean his performance was perfect or polished. At one point, Aiden was caught on camera laughing at something his attorney wrote on a piece of paper, undermining any apology he had made to Tristan's family. But that happiness didn't last long. When Aiden's grandmother took to the stand, her tearful testimony seemed to affect Aiden more than any other. As she tearfully confessed that the boy in front of her was not the grandson she had helped raise, Aiden was genuinely affected by the comments. Wow, this is so hard. This marks the only yeah. instance in the entire trial that Aiden was shown to exhibit some kind of genuine, non-contrived emotion. And, like a true psychopath, it was only because it affected him. Tristan's family's pain had elicited no expression from him for the duration of the trial. But see the way that he responds when his grandmother fears she'll never see him again. You know, I know we're a very large Tristan family. And uh, we pray all the time. I hope you can sit there a little bit. Please don't take him out of our lives forever. Uh, you know, I, I die and you see have to spend time with him sometime before I go. At this moment, it appears that Hayden had finally realized the scale of the consequences of his actions. Yeah. But it passed quickly. The judge eventually decided that Aiden's crime, which lacked any motive and was done purely to cause harm to another human, was worthy of life in prison. And Aiden, unsurprisingly, didn't seem phased by that news whatsoever. Mr. Fucci, having entered a plea of guilty to the crime of first-degree murder, I adjudicate you guilty of the premeditated first-degree murder of Tristan Bailey. Yep. I sentence you to life in prison. Because of your age, you are eligible for a review of the sentence in 25 years. Despite his public apologies to Tristan's family throughout the trial and after, Aiden doesn't seem to register what the sentence meant. In his mind, it likely doesn't mean anything. He always said he wanted to feel what it would be like to kill, and he achieved that. Well, shit. What the fuck is my dog barking? Oh, anyways. That video was, all I have to say is, holy shit, what a way to start the new year, am I right? <laughs> <sighs>